<laughs> and it will be available on, uh, let's see, uh, Amherst the YouTube, TV. The YouTube right? channel. And the YouTube channel, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, if anyone has uh, any additions or changes to the minutes, the last meeting on November 18th. I wondered why so much was in yellow. Is there yeah, a significance that was, uh, I am apologize for that. I should have taken that out. I had to give that to the town manager because that's the part that he approved. And um, so I had to give him a copy of the minutes okay. and and, high, and I highlighted that so he could just zoom in on that part if he, you know, as he read it to the council. So uh, I apologize, that's still in yellow. Okay. I have one little, um, one little suggestion in that first big paragraph, Meg Rosa made a motion and that is um, twice we say to Amherst Recreation, the first one should come out on the third, second and third lines. You see what I, where I am? Uh, oh, yeah. for under the name change, official recommendation. Yes. Leisure services and supplemental education to Amherst Recreation, LSSE to Amherst Recreation. Oh, you're right, good, good catch. Just those three words. So eliminate the first one probably. Mm -hmm. Or the second one, yeah, all right. Sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi Meg, you're back. Hey Meg. hey Meg. Hi. Sorry. No problem. We're just looking at uh, the minutes. If you have any, if you have any changes, we call the meeting to order at 6:04 p.m. of the Amherst Recreation Commission. Thank you, Becky, for doing it. <laughs> In your Steve. Well, there any any other changes? Anyone caught? No. Okay, then. One like to make a motion to approve the mission minutes. I'll move that we accept the minutes of no, the meeting of November 18th, 2020 as amended. Second. All in favor? Okay. Approved unanimously as amended. Uh, I mean, let's see, there aren't any other attendees, which means there are no, um, there will, there's no public comment at this time. So we can move to our next agenda item, which is the name change subcommittee update. Uh, well, there's, there's really not a lot to add. I don't think that we already haven't talked about, we extended the, the date for submission of uh, a logo from artists and high school students we have gotten some in good. so that's good news kind of exciting um and that that date was extended to january 8th i believe so we'll um we'll wait and see what we get back and, and then um, we will all look at those and kind of narrow it down to probably five and from there we'll um we'll make a selection so it's that's exciting. Um, remember too that we're still, I was reminded that we are part of the town. So our main logo will always be, and will probably be part of our letterhead. I will, will be prominent part of our letterhead will be the town's uh, crest, if you will. And ours is sort of a secondary logo. So we've already made, um, based on everyone's recommendations, strides in terms of uh, contacting sign uh, folks to come out and give us estimates on the signage in front of the building to have that changed. Um, the vehicle, the van, uh, we'll, we're going to have that old uh, logo removed and a new one put on. So, um, and there, and we're working on our forms right now, many of which which need to, uh, to have been updated anyway. So it's a good opportunity to kind of review what we have and uh, refresh things, if you will. Uh, even without the new logo, so that's good. Uh, I know that uh, there were some, <clears throat> there are different parts of the town's website that, for instance, the, uh, the LSSC commission site said LSSC commission, that's being changed. Yeah. Um, they were waiting for approval from the town manager, which then I kind of intervened and said, hey, we have that, you know, we've taken care of it, it's all done. So that and the CPA website listed all the commission members as well, and it's listed as LSSC. So that will be changed. And they're trying to do a search now to make sure that they catch all the LSSC and, re and change that to Amherst Recreation. Um, Sarah. 
Yeah, who, um, I mean, I think I'm the only one not on this committee, so maybe I'm the only one who doesn't know. Um, for example, the Facebook site, Facebook page, if that's, yeah, is still LSSE. So is that something IT also has to change? And Yeah, um, let me make a note of that, sir. That's a good point. I'm not sure. I just saw that today. I saw a new post today. I think what it does, um, I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on this, um, but I believe it redirects if you put in Amherst Recreation, but we'll, uh, let me follow up on that. That's a good point. And it would be the same with the YouTube channel, I suppose, right. for these videos. Would I think it, it might be more than just um, changing the name. It might need to be a new page. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> so that would be too bad. That. If, uh, is there a way though to keep it um like Amherst Recreation formerly LSSE so that uh, we have like a transition period for people who might be looking for one thing mm -hmm. um I know we've done that on some when we try to put out emails and so forth let me check on that's a good point I'm just writing all this down Any other questions, comments? Well, I just wonder, I know the the new town's new website, you know, it takes quite a while to make that complete. So do you know at what date it it is intended to be finished? Because I won't bother sending, you know, alerting people to things that they know perfectly well are <laughs> going to be addressed. But if after January 1st, for example, it's supposed to be all done, um, then I uh, might want to yeah. catch any, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a definitive, I think it's sort of a work in progress, but um, I think they're doing their best to keep, you yeah. know, to make the changes. But I, you know, I, I would hope by January 1st or at least you know, the 4th or whatever, right. that when we get back after the holidays that most of that's complete. But I, to, uh, today I heard from Marion that, you know, Barb, go on, it, it, it looks, it, it's really come together. And I have, honestly, I've been straight out all day and I haven't had a chance to get on my computer and look at it. So I'll, I'll do that tomorrow though. All right. Okay, any other comments, questions? All right, good. Um, the Cherry Hill Advisory Committee update Unfortunately, I don't have uh, in too much to um, update you on. I know that uh, Yusef, when he contacted me saying he wasn't going to be able to make the meeting tonight, uh, did ask and my update to him will be the update I give to you that it's sitting right now with the town manager. So I'm waiting for him to evaluate the charge that I uh, provided him. And I am hopeful that we can start at least, you know, have him go through the process of selecting members for that committee um, in January and then hopefully start meeting in as early as February. So that's the latest update and you know I'll keep um, trying to get that process uh, to move forward. Any questions on that? Uh, I can give you just a real brief quick update about Cherry Hill and snowmaking though. This is a pretty, uh, not snowmaking, uh, skiing opportunities. Snowmaking's on my mind. That's, that was another meeting I had today. But um, so as you may or may not know, John is out on uh, extend, John Coelho, who's our superintendent who takes care of the grooming is out on some extended medical leave for some surgery he had done and everything went very well. So he's in good shape, but he won't be able to do any of the grooming. Um, I just uh, want to say that um, we have two volunteers who have stepped up from the uh, Nordic Ski Association, and they have um, some experience. John has done his best also to do some training with him, with them, and so they'll be taking that responsibility over, and this snowstorm will be our first uh, venture out for them, so they're, they're really excited. Uh, DPW is going to make sure that the lot's plowed. I've ordered a porta potty should have been delivered today. So made sure that happened. Actually, Nick ordered it. Um, so we're ready to go now, and let's hope we have a snowy winter so people have some 
some opportunities to get out and enjoy um, just nature and being outside because there's snowshoeing that just opens up all kinds of opportunities besides skiing. So it's kind of cool. Uh, uh, any questions on any of that? It's, this probably will be a, a very brief meeting. We, I just looked and we often don't meet in December. So this is probably just an update sort of meeting, but please, if you have any questions, just chime in or comments. Um, <clears throat> winter aquatics program. So it looks like we're gonna try to do in a winter aquatics program. We've got permission to use the middle school pool. And at this, you know, but this is today. <laughs> <laughs> As of today, in, I always like to back in an hour. <laughs> right, you know, and by tomorrow we don't know, but for today, uh, we're going to start the process of recruiting our lifeguards and see who wants to come back, uh, our managers and so forth. And it won't be lessons again. It'll be very similar to what the kinds of programs that we offered in the um, summer. So we'll try to do maybe three evenings of lap swim, which would be cool. And then Saturday and Sunday, lap swim and open swim for the kids so yes would those also be by reservation most likely very similar to how we managed it in the summer because there's really such a high demand right now and, and then also a charge presumably per visit yeah it would be the same as yeah, we had like, yeah had done in the in the summer that's great uh, we'll think about memberships i'm kind of on the fence about that we'll see um we're going to try to get away from handling money so actually memberships is are an easier you know way to kind of deal with that mm. as little money as possible so uh, yeah so we'll wait and see like I you know it would be most likely I you know they they are, the schools thought we could be in there mid January I think that's over optimistic um, just based on trying, I, I think one of my biggest challenges right now is recruiting staff, part-time staff to work, for instance, the child care center. And I'm not sure how it'll go for that being inside the, the, the indoor swim pool. So we'll see. So I'm thinking more like February 1st. Yep. Becky. Um, there is a way to make it when you do the reservation that they pay up front and they get charged afterward, that might be like to get away from the money component mm -hmm. um, to make sure. And that way, if people don't show up, they've still kind of paid. So you're not like wasting the staff time. Like there's definitely ways to do that. Yeah, we, I, you know, you're absolutely right. We could probably manage it like we do at Cherry Hill where they prepay. We did get burned a little bit in the summer um, for, you know, there were people that didn't show up and I felt bad for other people who unfortunately didn't have an opportunity to swim because someone didn't show up. So yeah, no, that's a good point, Becky. And I would say that that might be preferable to memberships because what are you going to charge? I mean, you know, who, who knows how long the season will be? It yeah. could be canceled at any exactly. moment, right? So that's so but, true. But, but, it, but let's say it gets started February 1st. What is the longest it might run? Probably through May. Normally we'd run our programs through May. Oh, okay. And when we turn over to um, probably the beginning, it's usually the beginning of May, then we take a break because we have to recruit and train our summer staff. Right. Okay. So it's worthwhile, but I like that idea of maybe we just don't deal with memberships and have them pay as they go and do it through, um, the square with an online reservation system. Good, good comments. Good, good input. Anything else? All right. I assume the locker again. The locker people have to leave in their soaking no. wet suits to go out in the frigid air. But that's yeah. Does that's anyone here? I just have a question. Does anyone here belong to Hampshire Fitness or are swimming other places? Caroline, are you swimming somewhere? How are they managing that? I belong to Hampshire Fitness, but I'm not going there. So I can't say. Um, I've heard, uh, I can find out if you'd like me to, but um, I, I understand that you don't, you can go in the locker room, but you have to be really quick. Hmm. Um, I just thought I would like run in, swim and run out to my car and, you know, <laughs> take what I get. 
Yeah. Quizzer I can killing. get you that answer right now. Justin just came from there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, yeah. It might be nice to have an option, but I think it would also be nice for us to kind of try to accommodate, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, different, different needs for people. Um, I just as soon avoid any potential bumping into people hanging out anywhere mm -hmm. run in run out park as close yeah. as possible you know just let's make it easy yeah just put a layer up your sweats and just yeah right. bundle up and, I and kind then, of agree you know, with you. inform people inform people really well what they're getting into so people are prepared right. when they get there okay yeah, so they it. come in their suits and he doesn't see anybody leaving in suits he hasn't he doesn't go down to the locker room, but he thinks that they change really quick. They can be in the locker rooms for just like a minute or two and then they leave. So no showers then they have to shower yeah. home. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'll have, I'll have to do some more research on this. And like you say, I think we have to make it so if people just want to exit through the pool door and just throw their sweats on and things, mm -hmm. bundle up and head to their car, they can do it that they don't even have to go in the locker room if they choose not to. Um, I mean, but the I, swimmers are always different for kids. Like, well, right. I don't. I mean, swim team kids are totally used to that. <laughs> no, I totally get swim team kids are, but <laughs> they leave open swim well. kids <laughs> not so much. <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah, they're they're now totally used to it. That's for sure. All right. Um, well, thank you. Any other comments or questions? No, those are good. Do you know what a schedule might be like, Barb? Hmm. I know I don't right now. We probably, I'm sure the Tritons are, you know, biting at the bit to, uh, to get in as well. So I have to talk to them and see what, you know, they, they have as plans in there. Of course, is the high school schedule. So that's going to impact us as well. Um, although I don't think they're doing meets. I'm not sure. Again, don't quote me on that. Do you is know, Meg? Swimming? I don't think their swimming's in approved. Certainly not winter. Becky, did you? Uh, I think they are. Really? I remember Nordic <laughs> going to the source. I remember Nordic and hockey and yeah. basketball. Becky's yeah. checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he uh, is. Something was approved. Okay. Yeah. yeah Thanks, Peter. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's we were approved. I mean, I, otherwise we probably with masks been. on, Becky. With masks on. No, when <laughs> Snorkels. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One way once. Oh my goodness. Okay. Good. All right. So um, that's well. That's good. So it's been. Yeah. We'll see. I know. I don't have. So the answer to your question is no. I don't have a schedule yet. Well, three of us. I'm. The three entities uh, will work that out. I'm sure it. Uh, probably right after the first of the year. So child care remote learning assistance program. Wow, has that thing taken off? Who knew? Oh, I knew. Oh, oh, <laughs> and in the nick of time. Oh my God. Yeah. So I just say I have to give a huge shout out to my staff. They have just been amazing um, stepping up and and to help make this happen um, on, you know, just it's it's really I, I feel in knock on wood it's it's a, it's it's a very safe we're we're complying to every COVID rule plus more that we you know can possibly be out there um, we're looking we are completely full we have twenty that's our capacity we know we're we're applied to expand I think you know this um, it will probably be somewhere between an additional twenty to twenty four uh, children and there might be a third program. Um, opening up at Crocker Farm. So whew, this we've become uh, the Child Care Remote Learning Assistance Center, uh, I think, for Amherst, which is good. I mean, they, the kids that we are serving are just really, um, they're kids that normally would fall through the cracks and they are the most needy. And we, I think we are just providing an incredible service. And uh, so far, so good. The kids have been great. The parents have been super. Uh, so it's just working really, really, really well. Um, Grace Marshak, who is our director, has done an outstanding job of um, supervising that program. Nikki Abeli will supervise the second program. So we'll, we're going to break those into two different age groups. Um, and uh, our inspects, our site inspection is scheduled for January 6th. 
So we're looking to open that program probably the following week. And we have a waiting list of at least, I wanna say 20 to 30 kids still. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And these aren't, you know, these these kids, you know, they're just they they just need the help. They're just not mm -hmm. they're not connecting um, in in ways that kids with more support systems can. So this we're gonna, you know, we're basically their support system, which is good. And you know, everyone's kind of anyway. I'll, I think you get it. So yes, Sarah. So I'm I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I also listen to the school committee meetings, and I can't tell if every every child who is in one of our schools right now is in this program run by Amherst Rec, although I gather there's a Mark Smeadow thing also, or is there also some other program? That is, is are they all students doing distance learning under, you know, with supervision, or is there what we traditionally think of as childcare, like, you know, preschoolers or toddlers or yeah. All right. Remember this is what we're dealing with is we for our program and for Mark's Meadows program, we are taking care of kids K through sixth grade. So this isn't preschool. It's K through six. <clears throat> the program, there is another program at the high school, and Becky could probably speak more to this, but that deals with kids with more severe needs. Um, that we couldn't have, you know, that we're, we just don't have the ability to handle. So, um, you know, with specific IEPs and so forth, and, so forth. and that, I think you saw that in the paper. Yeah. So there are, there are, you know, two different things happening. Now, the Marks Mental Program, very similar to ours. They also are at capacity, but they are not interested in expanding, to my knowledge. Um, but we are, so we're, we're going to fill that void. Does that answer your question? Yes, but then it leaves me wondering, but this is not an Amherst Rec. I mean, maybe Becky knows. There are no kid, there are no students in seventh grade or higher, unless they're, unless they're, they have IEPs or in this other group. There are no middle or high schoolers in the building doing supervised distance learning? Not through LSSE or Mark's Meadow, no. Do you know if it's through any other? Is there any program? I know this is <laughs> off topic, but this I, is why I'm I can I can I connect can't. with you. Okay. Outside of that, but okay. yes. Okay. I I will say too that our program accepts up to you know we say K through six, but up to thirteen year olds. Mm -hmm. So we do have one individual who's in seventh grade mm -hmm. who we're we're assisting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Becky. Are all are all the people in not people are all the kids in the program right now town employees? children no. no a very few are maybe uh five to six families uh, we're serving from the town employees the rest have been referrals from the school okay so now well, it's open to it's open to <clears throat> everyone now because i remember well, at the beginning it was right, right. Yeah. it was originally okay. going to you know the things like i say change change out by the minute yeah. but, um originally we were set up to assist town employees. But I think we kind of knew that once we kind of reached everyone we needed to, we would have extra spaces. So we, we collaborated with the schools. And so the schools now get, act as a referral uh, agent, if you will, to place children in our, our program. Gotcha, all right. So, and they, and another thing, I don't know if you're aware, but we all the children receive free breakfast, free lunch, and transportation if they need it. So we do have a bus that comes and comes to school and goes to school, comes to our assistant learning program and leaves them. It's great. Any other questions, comments? Brady. All right. So I think I covered a lot of what's in the direct in the uh, director's report. But let's see, there's some, some new things happening though. Okay, so for the sports and you I receive this, the sports program, um, we're, we're offering a skills development basketball kind of clinic program that will be held at Pelham Elementary School. So we're fortunate to have that space. It's a small space, um, but uh, I think it's going to be adequate for what we're going to offer. 
And we've had incredible response al already, as you can imagine. Uh, it will serve uh, up to eighth grade. Uh, so we've got, I think it's second through eighth grade. And um, I think we'll be able to serve between 100 and 125 kids in that program. Wow. But, you know, that's sort of a, you know, usually we serve almost four or 500 kids, four to 500 kids. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not our normal kind of basketball program, but I think it will provide kids with an opportunity, not only, you know, just to do some ball handling skills and so forth, but more socialization, which I think is, is a huge need for, for kids um, right now. Uh, let's see, we do have to, we are gonna charge for this basically because the school is charging us. So we have to offset our expenses, um, but, but it will run mostly with volunteer coaches. I think almost 100% actually, volunteer coaches who have uh, kind of stepped up and said, yeah, it'll help, so it's great. Uh, that's going to, registration, like I said, has already started, and then the program will run through um, March 8th. So it's a good chunk of time and kids, to keep kids active, which is great. Uh, CPA, um, I think we've already touched on this. The um, In addition to Groff Park's lower-level pavilion, which the proposal that I presented, we also have the sandblasting of the Mill River Pool and the resealing. They'll put a new uh, ceiling. That'll be a nice project. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen because the funding can't be spent. I am, you know, better than I do on this, Sarah, but until July 1st, if the funding funds aren't released, correct? So it'll be next year, but it is much needed as that water, you know, the pool is kind of losing a little bit of water and uh, so, and it'll look much better, which is great. Barb? Yeah, uh, questions once, on that. Once town council, assuming town council approves these, they have to, they have the right. final say, of course, yes. and, and they have not scheduled their votes or hearing. Um, is it, so, so you would want to do that resealing like in May, right before the season? You, it's not going to be possible to just do it on July 1st, because, because. So that will have water in the pool. Right. We, yeah, we usually op open up around June 20th ish. So it's so, not so it's not so bad that you would want to delay opening up. No, I, I think we could get we can definitely get by another year. It's just, you know, it's the expense of the pain every year. It's um, you know, the little bit of leakage that happens, the cresting of well, Carolyn knows you can kind of see where the, the cement peels away in the deep end. And but uh, yeah. Okay. It, it'll it'll last another year. Uh, and then in addition to that, the North Common re renovation uh, that was also approved by CPA. And again, like you said, Sarah, all this still needs to be approved by town council. Uh, aquatics, we talked about the golf course, good, another great year for, rev uh, great month of revenues for the month of November. We were only open until November 15th, yet we brought in almost $10,500. Um, we generally, if we have a good November, I, I think the best November we've ever had is like $4,500. So that's just crazy. Um, again, uh, you know, it's just people wanting to be outdoors doing something active and we're happy to provide that for them. And if you look at your comparisons in terms of revenues, you know, all the way back, I did three years, FY19, 86,000 and change. FY20, 111, 689, and this year, 143, 424. So that's revenue comparisons from July 1st to November 30, essentially, because that's over. So that's good. Uh, talk about the advisory committee. We're still waiting to hear on that. Um, and the child care program. And adult youth education, a little thin. Obviously, um, just just several classes um, that are that are going to happen, but and, and or just a couple for adults and and one for children. But we also have been open to and have gotten some inquiries from potential instruct instructors. So we're sort of fluid in this. We're not really cutting our you know saying oh no that's it you know if something comes along 
or someone presents a proposal to us, we are open to certainly, you know, looking at it and trying to make it work if it's, you know, viable. <clears throat> so that's good. Um, Winterfest. Winterfest will not be like Winterfest in past, that's for sure, unfortunately. But we're, we're working with a bid. I did meet with a bid in the chamber. We had a good meeting. It looks like we're going to do some sort of a drive-by ice sculpture um, event. Uh, we're going to have at least 10 ice sculptures around various parts of either downtown and maybe the mill district, we're not sure. Um, possibly one day where uh, we would have some carriage rides for families, family units. Not too sure about how that will all work out, uh, the bids handling that, but um, definitely there may be a parade involved or it may be a free, you know, free, I don't say free for all, but you know, you could just go to the various um, spots and we'd have maps and so forth for people to, to vote on the sculptures. So that's in the works. We're meeting again <clears throat> next next week, I believe, or right after after uh, Christmas to kind of firm up that. We start, we, you know, we're trying to figure out how we're going to fund all this. Of course, that's all interesting. This is a terrible time to ask businesses for money. So we will reach out though to some of the, the businesses obviously that are doing well during this this pandemic and ask for their support. So hoping to fund it that way and and uh, we don't know yet uh, we were able to fund some of our special events uh, expenses for Halloween for instance with the cares money and you know we don't know yet what's going to happen in the next couple months in terms of assistance to towns and cities so we're hopefully there'll be another package like that coming coming down the pike so fingers crossed um, Told you, I think I've updated you. Oh, outreach. There's a, uh, Nikki's working on a holiday in person outreach program as we speak at various housing areas. Um, that will happen next week. And then um, strategic planning. Lots of upgrades. Take a look at the website. I'd love to get anyone's input. I haven't, as I said, I haven't had time. It's supposed to have been mostly done by today as I said, but I think it's still a work in progress. So if you want to take a look and check it out, I'm, just email me your comments. I'd love to hear what you think. The upgrades to RecTrack are still in process. So we still have some issues related to registrations and so forth, but they're working on that. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Are there any questions, comments from all of you? Well, at some point, I'll, I, I will have a question about the spring, but that's maybe not yet. Um, any, anything I can help you with now? Well, I'm wondering, high schoolers need more things to do also. And I wonder if there's been any thought, you know, because the sports programs are somewhat restricted and they're expensive. Um, I don't know if the private sports organizations plan to be as active in the spring, but I just, you know, traditionally we haven't done a lot, I think, for high school or, mm -hmm. some, you know, something for middle point. school. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, that's a good point. I'm, I'm glad you're high school and, and middle school. Thank, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring that up. That's a very good point. I'm not, you know, we've always been, we had a really strong um, basketball program for high school kids and great participation. Now, they're, they're, that just is not going to work at the Pelham Gym. I don't know. It's, it's like a postage stamp in there. And stretching it to eighth grade is even stretching it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'd love to do something for high schools. So let me talk to Mike about that. And see if he has some, um, and and there and Victoria. I mean, just like club sports, you know, even just to mm. you know learn to run or yoga or something, but or at home conditioning or something like 
that kind of thing that kids could log on to and get in shape like at home kind of thing that would be something like that's something the school usually does offer in the winter a conditioning yeah a conditioning class yeah. but they're not doing it so that could be something that would be really popular with mm -hmm. with kids who want to stay active mm -hmm. um i know we do offer that active uh -huh. beast and that that was popular we're trying to get that going again and now it's been popular with middle school and high school kids cedric uh has to get going on has done that for us and uh does a good job the i don't know something that just came across our radar is another program that the Booster Club has um, approached us with and it's called the Recess Band, but it wouldn't, it, it would go to the different housing areas and follow the uh, baby Burke around. But it, <laughs> yeah, and so we do like 30 minutes of, you know, recess kind of activities for kids. But again, that's younger kids. So um, yeah. Maybe uh, it could precede the baby Burke. <laughs> I know, I was just thinking that. And they gotta want to eat their food. <laughs> Exercise good, first. Yeah. Good point, good point, good point. Right, any other um, comments, questions? I feel like I was sort of just all reporting out tonight, but I say December's a little thin for us, especially without <laughs> um, Winterfest happening <clears throat> to Can't the degree we normally do. Yeah. Can you um, send me the business sponsorship stuff? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. I, have, I, I haven't developed it yet, but when I do, it'll be after the first of the year. Okay. Barb, is there any chance they'll do things like painting holiday windows or scenes on windows on storefronts downtown, like some different ways for, like I know there's more empty storefronts downtown so I'm trying to think of some way to bring a little color. People can still paint outside on windows mm -hmm. kind of thing that might be. That, that's an interesting Winterfest kind of activity where we, like we did for Halloween. I mean, they're family yeah. units, they're all household you know, units. So it, it's a good, good, good idea. Thanks, Becky. You know, uh, you know, our biggest concern because we all know that probably the end of January is going to be the, <clears throat> the big peak with the virus. And we've sort of scheduled this around the availabilities of the, um, the sculptures because they're also committed to Northampton. Um, so the, the weekend we have target is uh, February. And seventh, I guess. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that, you know, fingers crossed things it works out, but we certainly, we just don't want to bring, you know, like we couldn't do the luminary and we thought about how we could do it. And it just, it would be, it would just be almost impossible to kind of control uh, groups. We just don't have enough volunteers, I don't think. Right, anything else, Meg? Um, we need to schedule our next meeting, right? Okay, yep. January. Yeah. About January 20th, is that? So Wednesday again? Fine with me. What day, the 13th? Uh, the 20th. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Yeah, works for me. Okay. Victor, how's that for you? Um, <laughs> it works, <laughs> I guess. Okay. My schedule is all over the place, so, yeah, especially with the, the spike in COVID. Yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. yeah. I, I wish you the best and stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so that's good. January 20th then. Um, so I'd just like to close by thanking everyone. You know, I know it, it has not been a, a normal year for any anyone here. And I just appreciate all the support that you've given us. And, um, you know, let's hope for, for better days ahead in 2021. 
but thank you so much. Just so appreciate it. Yes, well, thank you for doing everything you. you're doing. Yeah, yeah Barb, great job. Well, yeah, appreciate and it. thanks to your <laughs> staff. Like you guys have been yeah. so responsive to like the needs of the community throughout mm -hmm. the pandemic. Yeah, like, they've been fantastic. I, I just, I, I can't say enough about them. They've just done such a great job. Amazingly creative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Energetic. Super. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I will definitely pass on that to them. Okay. Yep. Well, happy holidays to everybody. Yes, yes. happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. Bye. All right. On that note, yeah. then we will end our meeting. Uh, do we need a motion okay. to adjourn? Yeah, I think we do. All I right. make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second that one. <laughs> All in favor? Bye. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. 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 Happ